very warm welcome to another edition of the Digital Brew. Um, today, today I'm here at the Elaine School with uh, Matt Britland um, and we're talking about the role of digital in education. Um, Matt, thanks a lot for having me. Um, Thank you. Nice on this autumnal day. Yeah, it's lovely. Yep. Yeah. It's half term, but it's nice and quiet. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I came across you actually through one of your um, one of the pieces of content you've written, but okay. uh, could you give us a quick introduction to yourself and your role perhaps here at Elaine's? Yep, so um, I'm Director of IT and Digital Strategy here at Elaine's. Yep. Um, I'm a writer on education, um, technology. I've written for The Guardian, Disney, yep. TESS, uh, a number of different outlets and, and, yep. and spoke at a number of events uh, on the subject. Yep. So both teacher and uh, yes, a guru. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been teaching for about 13 years and this role is slightly different. Um, I, I work in a school, um, but yep. I, my focus is on um, predominantly on teaching and learning, um, and, but I'm not actually working in a classroom. Yeah, at so not, not at all? Or there's some no, so I've my, I've, um, my role has developed now, so yep. um, now I've got a lot of experience teaching and learning in the classroom. Yep. I can now move on and sort yeah. of have a bit Dive. more of a whole school sort of yeah, role no, here. Yeah, interesting role. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, you know, the sort of digital, I mean, it's interesting doing these digital brew series. It, it, mm. it touches on all our lives. But I think education yeah. for me is a very interesting one, partly through having two children. Um, and it, w one of the other um, episodes we did was actually mm. about the shortage of digital talent within the UK. So I think okay. the, the, the sort of two aspects I think I, you know, I'd like to focus on. Yeah. Okay, one is the, the sort of impact of technology or digital technology within the classroom environment right, yeah. and, the, and the implications on on school life. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of um, second half um, is the, I guess, the kind of curricular considerations. Mm. So, you know, yeah. what, what's happening in that space? Mm -hmm. and, um, just to explore that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, starting with the, um, the, the kind of digital technology, mm. I, mean, I, I haven't been in a classroom for some right, time yeah. other than my kids' sort of parent teach evenings. And, yeah, yeah there's no chalk there's no blackboard mm. here we've mm. got you know well, whiteboard normal whiteboard but yeah you explain to me what this thing does it, it's pretty kind of impressive yeah and, uh, as with most things in life i imagine there's probably positives and negatives mm. um yeah yeah a very difficult challenge to kind of condense but I in terms mm. of the positive impacts of yeah. technology that you've seen and witnessed in your kind of teaching career to date yeah i think um digital technology in a classroom gives you freedom Mm -hmm. So it gives you freedom to teach in a different way, um, deliver content in a different way, yeah. um, and kind of ex extends the classroom. Um, so if you're in the classroom and there's technology in the classroom, um, students can access resources. You yeah. don't have to print all these resources out. In terms of planning lessons, you can, um, you can have a whole bank of resources on um, in a digital format. Yeah. So then you don't have to print them all off and give them to the student. They have got access to all of this content uh, whenever yeah. you decide they want it. So when I was at school, often you would maybe run out of stuff to do. Yeah. Um, but that's, that doesn't have to be the case now. Um, and also, you can be more of an exploratory learner as well. So you're learning about something in the classroom. Yeah. If you've got access to the internet, you've got access to a breadth of, of knowledge yeah. um, mm -hmm. that perhaps um, wouldn't normally be readily available. Yeah. Um, it kind of also opens up the sort of collaboration as well. Mm -hmm. So things like Google Docs and Office 365, students are able to work in groups more effectively. Yeah. So you know, when I first started teaching, if you had a, you were working on a presentation, for instance, each student would work on a separate slide, you'd have to email the slides to one person, they'd have to put it yeah. all together. And now you can just work on one document for yeah. everybody. And it kind of makes things far smoother and more productive. Yeah, it's interesting, actually. I'd, I'd even, certainly might do, we didn't even email things around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm that old. But it's, um, yeah, I think collaboration and, and even things like distance learning, yeah. obviously not necessarily relevant to all, to all forms of education, but if you're mm. ill, for example, or if you're away doing, I don't know, sports tours or so, whatever yeah. it may be, that just the technology would enable a, a distance learning. Well, I think this is it as well. And so it's things like for homework or for research projects or anything you want to do, student doesn't have to necessarily bring loads of books home with them. Yeah. If they've got technology at home or if they've, you know, they have a, a, an iPad or a tablet or a smartphone, anything yeah. like that, they can access resources, digital yeah. textbooks, if a school offers digital textbooks. Do you, I mean, do you find some teachers, uh, I guess they're kind of worried about losing control. I mean, you're right, yeah. if you've got access to the internet, you've got a whole yeah. world, I mean, you've got the biggest library ever conceived, yeah. but yeah. that, um, you know, plagiarism must be an issue. And they, they, you know, they can find stuff and copy it pretty easily. There is. Lots Di of digital platforms have sort of plagiarism tools. Yeah. So when you upload something, it 
all checks it all, checks. works okay. out, and then compares it against a uh, breadth of information, mm. and, and and can come back. But it is it is a ch it's a change of uh, working. Yeah, you know, if you're not used to using digital technology all the time, it it is intimidating. Yeah. Teachers are busy people as well. Yeah, you know, we're very very busy, and having to learn something new. Yeah. And then communicating that to your to your students and working in a different way, it's 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 difficult. And it yeah. isn't always necessarily because you know you don't want to do it. It's more how am I gonna find the time to do that? I guess it creates more work than sort of started, then yeah, you know, that it, doesn't really help too much. Yeah, I mean it can do. If you've got someone who is kind of responsible for digital strategy, kinda of like I am, it, you can put uh, resources into place, training into place yep. so that the transition is as smooth as possible. Yeah. And often, teachers have a lot of their resources, they're all digitized anyway. Okay. So it's about just hosting on a platform, yeah. whether it's Google Docs or Firefly, for instance, which is like a learning platform. Yep. So it's, it, logistically, it can be difficult, but once you get into the flow of things, it can really sort of yeah. change things. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, coming back to the kind of worries about losing control, mm. and that there was a kind of big bad world with the internet. The reality is that's how life is these days. So yeah. I think you yeah. um, would be doing the, 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 the students a disservice if you didn't actually embrace that and say, yeah. look, well, you, you've got these tools, that, you know, very readily available. Learn how to use them for the benefit of your your learning. And I, I suppose yeah. the more, um, not even cavalier teachers, but the mm. more sort of, I hate to use the word modern, but yeah. you know, the teachers that recognise that and acknowledge that and, 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 and love it themselves. Yeah. And, and that must be key part in terms of it is, it is key because it, th those teachers can encourage other teachers to sort of ad adopt that sort yeah. of way of working and funnily enough it isn't always the the newest teachers who are always the best yeah. I've worked with some teachers who've been teaching for you know years you mm -hmm. know decades and they have been they love really it. quick to yeah. uh, adopt technology because they have seen that it can improve the way that they work yeah so if you've got everything digital it's very difficult to lose all of that stuff Yes. You know, if it's hosted uh, somewhere, um, you don't lose work. Yep. Um, you can come back in, you know, six years' time and still get that work back. Yeah. Um, and also, students have less opportunity to say that they have lost. Could, their couldn't work. done it. Yeah, exactly. You know, because yeah, it's, it's, it's on a digital not platform. Doing it. yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. You can kind of track it and uh, and sort of purely again th thinking through the, the kind of parents' yeah. eyes. Mm. Um, it, you know, never ceases to amaze me how much, well, just how adept. Mm. Children are uh, using technology, yeah. particularly touch interfaces. I mean, you're explaining how this you know, this works, yeah. and that to me, again, it's alien to me in, mm. in the education world because I'm just too old. But yeah. I, I would have thought that would make lessons far more engaging. And, and the stuff you can do now with this technology, you simply couldn't have done. And yeah. it, it must bring learning to life and, and, and yeah. be a richer experience. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as long as the technology is used in a productive way, yeah. So. It needs to enrich something. It needs yep. to improve something, um, or at least do something equally as good, but with um, but with other advantages. Yeah. I think that's important. Just throwing technology into the classroom and just hoping that kids are going to be able to use yeah, it. It's, it's just a it's a yeah. hiding to nowhere basically. Yeah. And then what happens is technology is blamed rather than the Im the implement implementation. Yeah. Um, so yes, students are really good at touch screens and technology and stuff, but using it in a productive way is difficult. Yes. So they need to be, um, you know, they're, they're learning to be challenged, um, channeled into certain ways. Yeah. Because they might not, they go, oh, brilliant, I've got a Chromebook or an iPad or whatever yeah. it might be, but they mostly just use it to browse the internet or look on yeah. YouTube <laughs> or play games. Yeah. And when you're going, you can do this to support your learning. Yeah. I go, oh, brilliant. How, how am I going to do that? Yeah. And it's important that it's made clear to the students and they're shown how to do it. Otherwise, yeah. it can just be another little shiny, it's almost a shiny. A yeah, it could be a distraction. Yeah, exactly. I suppose it's like any tool, the, the real value in the tools, and, the, and it's the art of using that tool. And, and then the, the best teachers will use the technology to, to, to augment learning and yeah. make it, a, 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 say, a richer experience. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. actually, you know, you, the speed at which you can learn stuff th through touch mm. and play and, you know, just, yeah. I, mean, I don't think there's any doubt that that, mm. that happens. So yeah. it's kind of, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to go back and do it myself. You know, I'd say, I'd say my, yeah, me too. You, you watch two year olds with a, mm. with a tablet and they're all yeah. over it. Whereas yeah. um, I think oh, my generation, I'd like to think we can do it, but yeah. certainly some of the kind of older generations, you know, they really would struggle with that. And it yeah. is totally alien. Um, yeah, it's a different way of working. Yeah, but I'd say it's much more um, engaging. So 
you know, the traditional teacher standing up in front of a classroom, mm. learning kind of Latin tables by rote. Yeah. That, that, it just feels archaic. It feels yeah. like it can't be good yeah. for children. I mean, I think there is, there is room for that. I, th I think yeah. the great thing about technology is that it enables you to do, to work in whatever way you want in the yeah. classroom. If you want to teach from the front, absolutely teach from the front. But if you all of a sudden go, right, I want to teach from the front, now I want to do something different. I want yeah. to do something student-led or I yeah. want to do something research-based or I want to do a quiz because yep. um, I want to collect, uh, you know, I want to find out their understanding yeah. um, of the lesson that I've just taught. You can do an electronic quiz, they, yeah. they do it, you Quickly explore validate, the, yeah. yeah, so you can validate yeah. all that information. So I think some people think it's, it's all technology or it's no technology. Yep. And I, I just don't think, I just don't see yeah. that how, it, that's not the world, yeah, you no, know, it's a tool and yeah. being able to use, have all these options you know, for you. I think it's just br I think yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, I agree. And I think, yeah, I say the, 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 the risk is that distraction factor, but yeah. I think once the, you know, perhaps the novelty factor is sort of, you go over the hump of, well, yeah. I've got a tablet or whatever it may be, mm. um, and then you, so you, 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 you're actually teaching the, 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 the how you're going to use this to mm. sort of enhance your learning. Yeah. That, that, that's where you, almost the technology sort of fades in the background. Yeah. It should be transparent. It should just be like just the way that you work. Yeah. So, you know, it's not, you don't do book learning. Yep. You just use a book to, as a tool to help you learn. Yeah. The same way as you could use a tablet or a computer yeah. or a touch screen or whatever it might yeah. be. And it's kind of finding that balance where um, it isn't all or nothing. It's yeah, a blend no. of everything. And it I think does, it's important. Uh, how good is, uh, currently is technology mm. at adapting? So you have your objective to, to learn X. Yeah. Different pupils will have different ways of learning that. And then some people will be better at sort of mm. just repetitive stuff. Some people will be better through sort of, you know, play learning. Yeah. I, is there technology emerging now which actually, so within one class, you can actually uh, effectively teach different approaches? Well, I think that's the, that's the beauty of digital. Because yeah. as a teacher, you, you are able to um, send different resources or differentiated yeah. resources or whatever you like to, to individual students. Um, or use a learning platform, say, um, to, to channel people into a certain, to students into a certain way. Mm -hmm. So it just gives a freedom and it can make learning more personalised for the yeah, student because crazy. they can approach problems in a different way, perhaps. Yep. Whereas if you're, you've got one tool, pen and paper, you're, that's the way that you're going to do it. Yeah, Whereas a digital, you can, so I, I, the best classrooms I've been in was where we've got an iPad where they're doing some activities on an iPad, they've got pen and paper with them, they're doing stuff on that as well. You know, if they want to have a digital copy of that, PDF it on their, yeah. their device, upload it to the learning platform or to wherever they want to have it. And they have access to all these different yeah, resources that yeah. can be very quickly digitized. Um, and it just wasn't that possible. Yeah, it's I've, more I've than a few years ago, you know. Yeah, and I've, I've seen it. My my oldest son or elder son has just started secondary school, mm. and you know all his homework is done basically online. And, and you say it's all Google Docs. Yeah. And so the the, the kind of prep brief will be, mm. you know, here's a here's a sort of Google slides presentation, yeah. and it's got all the assets you need to, yeah. to produce the work, and it it's good. And um, yeah. well, I sometimes think. Um, is, is it creating more work for teachers? Because if, if there's something missing, he, you know, he, he then email yeah. the teachers. And they, I mean, the teachers are great. They're, they're replying yeah. late in the evening. I'm like, is, is that yeah. a good thing? I mean, that is a really good point. That's a really good point because it does. It, it can open up the channel of communication. Dialogue's strong and brilliant, yeah. but it's invasive as well. It is, and it's, it's down to the teacher or the school yeah. to, to manage that Set and policies. say what the expectation is yeah. in terms of um, teachers replying. Yeah. You know, so whilst a lot of teachers will just reply, yeah, because get it done. I'm just going to reply. Close it. Um, yep. Whereas the expectation should be that these are the hours in which you work. Yeah, um, and students need to sort of understand that there is a barrier, even though with technology it seems yep. like there isn't a barrier. And it's kind of yep. down to the school and and head of department and teachers to kind of set those expectations for yeah. students. But it's 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 positive, but then it's also can yeah. be invasive as well. I guess it's like life. Everyone's, yeah. Everyone remembers a good teacher. Everyone remembers a sort of less good teacher. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's yeah, I think it's setting the the expectations of both students well, and parents actually yeah. getting them involved. You know what what can you do yeah. um, within each sort of subject yeah. or, or yeah. teacher? I guess. And it's, that's, that's what it's down as well to the use of technology in the classroom as well. Yeah. So it can be some people could find it a distraction. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but I get distracted on yep. technology all Definitely, the time. Yeah. And I suppose as a teacher, managing that distraction and that uh, behavior management in the classroom and the school have, again, expectations. 
this is when you use the technology, this yeah. is when you don't. Some classrooms will be like, just use the technology, do what you need to do, use what you need to do, yeah. complete the task or whatever it might be. But then I suppose that teacher, if he's going to have that sort of, if he or she are going to have that environment, they need to be active. Yeah. You know, they need to be moving around because we do get distracted and it's sort of keeping, yeah. it's basically like a traditional classroom. Except that rather than saying don't play this game on a piece of paper like I used to do at school, yeah. you know, you're saying Doodle don't on go that, on that, yeah, don't exactly. go on, you know. Yeah. And um, there are restrictions you can apply um, to tablets and the computers just to prevent students from going yeah. out to certain places. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of just walking yeah, that line. It's, yeah, it's modern. I guess modern life, and it's um, a it's a string in your bow as a teacher, yeah. and you, it's how you use that. And, and yeah. again, um, and probably come on that perhaps in the kind of curriculum yeah. sort of discussion a bit later, but. Um, it's, I, I imagine it will vary um, from, from sort of teacher to teacher. Mm. But one of the, again, one of the sort of possible negatives I thought yeah. about is this, this whole sort of concept of a digital divide. So yeah. some schools will be well equipped, mm. um, some schools less so. And that, that's both in terms of people mm. um, and crucially, you know, capital expenditure. Yeah. It's not an insubstantial no. cost to kind of you know, re sort of you know re-equip an yeah. entire school is, is, mm. is a massive investment yeah and, and that, that's tough that's tough yeah and schools have priorities yeah you know lots of schools can't afford to buy stationery yeah um a lot of most schools understand how important digital technology is yeah. and i think there was a recent article i can't remember where it was maybe the bbc about aging technology in classrooms yeah. and not able to afford to do it and i think tech companies have a, a big part to play in this mm -hmm because they can support schools, I think, better than they're doing at the moment. Um, yeah, so yes, some you will get educational discount, yep. but most of the time that educational discount Still money, isn't, isn't it? really yeah. going to well, help that much. Google, Google you know? Docs, that yeah, so things like that. Yeah. yeah, so things like Google Docs, you know, that's it's free, yeah. um, which is great, but the actual technology to use that yep. um, isn't free. No, although again, I mean, I, for example, my kids, I bought a Chromebook. 200 yeah. quid and it's pretty yeah, good yeah. and because it just interfaces so well with yeah. the google sort of properties it, it, for what they need it's absolutely perfect yeah. they wouldn't want to be doing sort of advanced yeah. stuff on it yeah I, and again you know that's a good point joe because lots of people so if you're working on a digital strategy you don't go i'm going to go into this digital strategy and go i want this bit yeah. of technology you kind of have to decide what's best for the school the students the teachers yep. your budget and then working from there and deciding what you think you need so you don't have to go out and buy, you know, thousands of hundreds of iPads. Yeah. If Chromebook for 200 quid does the job, does yeah, what you exactly want what to yeah. achieve, yeah. then absolutely. I mean, even then, that could be pushing people's budgets as well. But, and again, support yeah. That's from gonna, maybe some sort of the parent tech teacher companies. Or PTAs or PSAs, or yeah. you know, if there's fundraising for specific. And I, I would have thought appetite for, I, I call it canality in, in sort of the widest possible sense, yeah. I would have thought parents agenda I would have thought mm. they want their children yeah. to be very um, comfortable using yeah. technologies yeah. more so than they are probably themselves yeah I mean always every time I've been on a parents evening I mean I'm a computing teacher by trade yeah. and you know they understand the importance of yeah. computing and IT and things like that yeah. um, but along with the technology you've also got to think about the the infrastructure that goes behind it yeah you know massive if, yeah so if if you've got Chromebooks and they're brilliant but the Wi-Fi is not robust yeah, enough. It's, just, it's not, yeah. you know, it's not the, the density. There's not enough density, or it's not fast enough, yeah. or reliable enough. Then that technology, again, that front-end user technology yeah. is going to get the blame. No, I'm sure. Um, so it's that investment behind the scenes as well, which needs to be done before yeah. the technology, you know, the actual hardware that the kids might use. Yeah, and teachers and, and come and in. And you, you've, you've got the infrastructure. You've got the, I say, kind of capital cost. But yeah, and, and I'm sure this is particularly, you know important for your role now yeah um setting guidelines around how this is used because yeah. again in the you know a really obvious sort of mm. negative aspect of technology mm. is cyberbullying and, yeah. and, and the, and the, 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 the you know, manifestly mm. disruptive nature of yeah. people being you know using their phones during class or yeah you know whatever it is upskirting in the playground and yeah. there's, there's there's an endless mm. list of negative stuff yeah. which is tough and i, and, and is, I guess yeah. i don't think there's any I wouldn't propose to the answer now. Is, it, is that just down to the schools to set? Um, I mean, it is down to the schools yeah. to set expectations again, um, what their rules are, um, addressing what you know, what is the size of the problem, yep. if, if any, how are they going to deal with issues happening outside of the classroom at home, yeah, um, what are their rules around mobile technology yep. in terms of students' smartphones. It's real tough. It's one. a minefield. Like, again, I guess if you can set 
guiding principles, yeah. you, you can equip the children for you know a, a wider life because again, is, you yeah. know, sitting on the Xbox, chatting away, and things yeah. which all children do. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's it, it, it's intimidating as, yeah. as a parent. You think yeah. how do you, how do you control that? And yeah. You like to think you, you need to allow you need to sort of set your children on yeah. the right path and equip yeah. them with the right decision making processes. That's it. To hopefully, it, not go wrong. It's about education for the kids. Yep. Um, for the teachers and for the parents. Yep. I mean, parents need to um, be told what the kids need get told yeah. essentially, but then but more. Yeah. Because they need to know how to protect their children. Yeah. Um, um, you know, they've got a smartphone. Um, so how can I start my my child going out and then? get on any site that they want. Yeah. And there are ways to prevent it. Yeah. But it's 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 the education of the parents. Yeah, some parents it. brilliant, some parents yeah. you know, no, again, not so much. And it's not personal experience. We we've had the whole kind of, you know, cyber, cyber protection thing and yeah. it's, it wasn't mandatory. Um, I have to confess I didn't go, my wife mm. did. Um, and yeah. I think it's good, but yeah. it's I think again that will vary kind of from, from school to school. So yeah. and if there's not the expertise within the school, yeah. Um, then again, that can be probably can get outside speakers yeah, in. But some charge, some don't. I mean, most do, to be honest. And then there's everyone battling for them. So it's really difficult. But having someone in school who is able to be responsible for that sort of education yeah. is really, really important yeah, as well. Yeah, no, that's good. So in terms of the curricular yeah. aspects of it, um, probably, I mean, just as alluded to, you know, some schools have resources and some don't. I mean, yeah. how much of a challenge is it um, for, the, the, for, for the majority of schools mm. to... To, to, to do this, I mean, in mm. terms of um, skilled teaching staff, is, is that is that as much of a challenge within teaching as it feels it is within the kind of private sector and yeah. the sort of digital world? It is a challenge, um, yeah. and staff need to be supported. Yeah. Um, it can't be an expectation that everyone is instantly going to know how these things work. Yeah. Some teachers will fly ahead and be really confident with it and yeah. use it all the time. Some teachers will be like. Yeah, I'll give it a go. I'm not quite sure how to do it, but I'll, I will learn. And then you'll yeah. get some teachers who either don't want to or aren't confident. And yeah. it's important that they're, every single teacher is given the support that they need to yeah. bring everybody as close as possible to the same point. Yeah. Um, and that's difficult because you need time. Yeah. Not only the time of the person who's going to be training them, yeah. but also their teacher's time. time. Yeah, exactly. And there's not a lot of time. Yeah. So it and is a, it's a huge big challenge. Kind of cultural shift in the way yeah. that they work. Which is, I think, yeah, said yeah. earlier on, some teachers will embrace it and love it, mm. embrace it, whereas it's human nature. Some people, yeah. will, you know, if you're two ways away from retirement and you've got your processes, you've mm. got your lessons planned, yeah. you've got everything lined up, mm. you, you, you're going to fight it. And, and that's, that's the same for any organisation. That's yeah. not true for just education. Yeah. It's just ch changes yeah. is resi resisted, I think. It is. And I suppose it's modelling um, why mm -hmm. or showing how it's going to improve their lives. Yeah, um, their teaching lives and Show the administration the and their students and stuff like that. It yeah. can be a hard sell, yeah. um, but I've, you know, it's not out of the question. Um, yeah. And all teachers, the vast majority of teachers, just want to go in and do a really good job. Yep. Um, and if you're introducing this sort of new technology, it's it's hard. To, again, time is really difficult to come along. Yeah. And often they go, well, I haven't got time to do it, and I just want to concentrate and get the most out of these kit, my students. Yeah. So it is a really, it is a really fine line. Yeah. Um, but support training is yeah. absolutely, is absolutely it, is, necessary. Is it, is it sort of fair assumption I have that most teachers acknowledge that there is no choice? You, you, they they have to embrace technology and they have to sort of accept the change. And as I say, it's about equipping their students for yeah. their future life is, is that is that an appetite which is yeah which I is think there? so I think I yeah. said the majority of uh, you know the vast majority you know teachers in general they want what's best for their students again yeah. um, and as a school if you're introducing this technology and showing how it can improve the students yeah. educational outcomes uh, improve teaching and learning teachers want to be involved yeah um, but again it's Difficult to be involved when you don't have the time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they as teachers use technology all the time. Yeah. You know, writing lesson plans. Yeah. You know, you will never see a teacher, very rarely, who isn't on a computer at some point. Yeah. And they understand that it's necessary. But there are some leaps that schools make which are difficult. Yeah. Um, and do change the way. That, you know, one to one, for instance, where every student's got a device, every teacher's got a device. Yeah. That's difficult. You yeah. know, it's difficult to implement. It's difficult to train for. Um, and it's uh, it just presents challenges. Yeah. Do you see um, more demand for 
um, you know, computer stroke, digital stroke, whatever you want to call it, mm. related syllabus. So the actual what the children are learning. So we talk about the, the way mm. in which you learn them for, yeah. and that permeates across all subjects. Yeah. But is there, is there, you know, what kind of, what, what's happening in the world of what do we want to learn about yeah. and, and what courses are growing in popularity which are fading? I think in terms of cross-curricular digital yeah. skills, um, it's down to um, schools overarching digital strategy, yep. combining that with teaching and learning strategy. Yeah. So these are the expectations that we have. Mm -hmm. um, I know I use the word expectations a lot, yep. but that is exactly what it is. Absolutely and yeah. then again, training and then showing teachers, and it's all down to what technology is available to them. Yep. This is how we can take advantage of this technology across the board in every single lesson. Yeah. Um, so it's less about necessarily a qualification, more about just using um, it. Just using yeah, it. That's probably, and that's and right. having strategy yeah. and building into lesson plans yeah. and department development plans, school development plans, and thinking like that. Yeah. It can't just be a technology, yeah, go ahead. It needs to be solution. thought about. You yeah. know? It needs to be thought about. Otherwise, like any strategy, it's not going to work. Yeah. And that's when technology gets to blame for stuff because it's not thought yeah, out Yeah, there's properly. been tech, well, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Is, is, so you're wrong, it sounds a fascinating role. Is, is mm. that a role, I presume that didn't exist not that long ago. I mean, do, um, all, do all schools have that kind of role? Or is it, um, is it? There are lots and lots of schools who have a similar role. Yeah. Um, they are becoming more and more, you're seeing them it's more important, and more, essentially, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I love it, this is what, it's what I like doing. Tick, yeah. So it is, it is a job, but it's something that I really enjoy doing yeah. as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, lots of schools have this because you you need to have someone responsible for it. Yeah, and it's not it's certainly heads. You know, they're very busy, but they yeah. they must acknowledge crikey that there's a sort of sea change going mm. on, which we we are probably in the middle of. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, we need to be confident that the decisions you make today, which may not be implemented for two yeah. or three years, or certainly wouldn't see the, the full benefits. For yeah. Some time. Oh yeah. So I'm I'm looking at strategies now, which you know will take two years, yeah. essentially three years to work out. Obviously there's steps yep. that you have to go through to, to get to that and now people will see changes along the road. Yeah. But yeah, it's not a kind of snap your fingers, it's gonna be done. It's yeah. but that needs to be communicated to staff yeah. as well. So it isn't just a kind of nothing is said for months, years. Yeah. You know, they need this, to this be this, this and they the, need to be the, involved in decisions. The as journey. Well. Yeah, yeah, no exactly and get them bought into yeah. it and understanding each step and what the control yeah, yeah. is be absolutely made, yeah. absolutely. No, that's good. I mean, we could talk them for, for, for months on end, mm. but the, we, we traditionally end on a kind of, what's the vision? So mm. Matt's digital vision for education, what's the kind of next, probably not 10 years away, but the next big things which you, you're excited by and you can kind of so see really... So about five years ago, I wrote an article about future technology. Yep. Um, and that was on The Guardian. Yep. And um, I, loved, I loved writing that, it was brilliant. And I talked about the cloud um, yep. and how that, the future is in the cloud. Yeah. Um, the internet, basically. Yeah. Um, and I still believe that. Uh, and you see it more and more. You know, yeah. more and more cloud working, more and more services moving into the mm. cloud. Collaborative. Manager information systems in the cloud. Everything moving into the cloud. Yeah. Um, which is great, but it also makes technology uh, services accessible mm -hmm. pretty much anywhere with an internet connection yep. uh, or web browser. So I think it's all going to continue to develop that way. Yeah. Um, in terms of things like um, Hardware, I love virtual reality. Yep. I love augmented reality. Yeah, I guess for learning, just in terms of chucking a headset and yeah. you're in a kind of Viking settlement suddenly. And that, yeah. A, a, as, a, as, a, as an experience of children, it's, it's yeah. phenomenal. I mean, it, I mean, you could argue it might replace visits to the kind of some museums, which, yeah. which would be a shame. Well, it would be, but I mean, it logistically it can be difficult taking kids yeah, out. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, and expensive. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've visited the Moo, yeah. you know, and this was on quite a high-end bit of kit, but yeah. you can do very similar experiences good, yeah. on, on, on the more affordable things. Yep. But I was blown away and show, obviously, there's no point in me just looking at it, show with the teachers. They're like, whoa, this is amazing. For history, we've used art packages where they're able to make 3D pieces of art and sculpture. Um, just, it's, uh, it's just amazing. Yeah, it's and when totally it gets to the right point where it's affordable, I think it's great. And augmented reality as well, where yep. you can actually um, make books come alive, or yeah. you can you can augment things in front of you that you wouldn't think, like planets or cells and things like that. Just stuff like that is no. Um, I mean, it's, it's, there's brings no doubt. it to life, uh, you know. Exactly, and, and it. I mean, the word augmented is is the clue. But yeah. if, you know, if you think um, 
you know, most museum experiences now, they're pretty good. You get the old headset and you walk yeah. around. I mean, that's that simple technology, and it's literally yeah. just sort of replaying audio or sometimes video. But yeah. it really made it. I mean, I went to um, Verdun, I'll see you in France with, yeah. with, with the boys, and it's really good. You walked around this big castle, and in each point, you played a little video. And it, I mean, it's, it wasn't that's not mm. groundbreaking, but it, it, it definitely enhanced that experience yeah. and, you, and you learned yeah. a, a lot more because you yeah. I would not read it from yeah. I know I wouldn't and uh, augmented reality it's it's part of our world yeah. as well you, you, so it isn't just replacing one with the other you yeah. kind of it's all together and yeah. you know it's just being able to to play with things and see things in real life where you wouldn't yeah. normally be able to as part of the normal world I think is I think, I think you brilliant. remember it more than if, 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 if yeah. a sort of simplistic aim of mm. education is to kind of learn and crucially remember yeah. stuff and, and, and enjoy that process. Mm. And I think that there's a yeah. no, no brainer. Yeah, and you can take that technology home with you. I mean, if you've yeah. got a smartphone, um, obviously it tends to be some of the more high-end smartphones that really can bring AR yeah. to life, but that will just become mainstream, like just yeah, become what agree. is normal. Um, so you're able to experience stuff. And that's a brilliant way of combining traditional tools, paper, pens, whatever it might be, yep. with yeah, exactly. technology. Also think, uh, machine learning, AI, mm -hmm. I think is going to be, um, I mean, this isn't new to, to people, but I think it's it's going to change things. Yep. At the moment, you know, we, you write reports every half term or every term, whenever it might be, mm -hmm. and you and you send data to parents, you grade cards. Yep. Um, but with you know, the way that data can be changed and machine learning can be used, you could have that sort of data where teachers aren't necessarily going to have to write report after report yeah. after report after report. It could be Copy and paste. live data. <laughs> That is um, for the individual yeah. student, but but it's, it's life. So you can up see things that, yeah. that, are, that are happening and dashboards. Um, I'm sure people. people wouldn't like the idea of um, you know reports being written by a computer, well, but it'd be based it, on yeah, what the teacher is on, telling. Yeah, regular data yeah. sort of put in. They they can yeah. chart something. They can have a yeah. very realistic forecasting on yeah. the back of that. I mean, I I wrote an email to you yesterday, yeah. and Google just predicted what I was going to write yeah. based on what I'd written before. Um, and I think it still needs that personal touch from, yeah, from, exactly. from teachers, but it gives them another tool to help write it their reports. Facilitate the process and of being a good teacher. And report writing is very time consuming. Yeah. Um, reporting data is very time consuming and having something able to, to produce something for a teacher just makes their lives easier. Yeah. Gives more information to parents, to students. I think it's a win-win. Yeah. So all these things I think are combining together. And I think most of all, it's important that it's just everything seamless. That's right. Everything just works it's together. It's a facilitator role. Yeah. And it becomes invisible and it just, it just makes the lives of everybody easier, yeah. more productive. Teaching and learning is enhanced. Um, you know, teachers being able to organise their time and everything. It just, it just needs to, to work. Yeah. Cool. Matt, I very much enjoyed my yeah, me trip too. back Thank down you, to there classroom so yeah. thanks for your time pleasure um hope you enjoyed that um as always um we're always up for um ideas if you want to be involved with the uh, future digital brew um please get in touch thank you